Hi, this is Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room classroom here on Wolf Mountain. These 10 videos are a review of all of the 462 questions that make up the general license question pool. The idea behind the videos is a way to prepare for the exam. I'm going to be reading the question and then the correct answer and when I can I'll provide a brief explanation as to why that happens to be the correct answer. And this is the last part 10. Alright G0 A01 which is one way that RF energy can affect human body tissue. Well if you ever had an RF burn it hurts so the answer is A it heats body tissue. Uh, doesn't cause radiation poisoning, can't change the blood count, and certainly doesn't cool body tissue. G0A02. Which of the following properties is important in estimating whether an RF signal exceeds the maximum permissible exposure, or MPE? Um, duty cycle, frequency, power density. So how strong it is, frequency, how long it lasts, all those things are correct. So it's D. G0, A03, how can you determine that your station complies with FCC RF exposure regulations? It's all of these things. Uh, you have to look at Bulletin 65, uh, computer modeling. The most important one is field strength readings. And in the next video that I'm currently producing, it is the construction of a field strength meter. So that's that's timely. G0A04, what does time averaging mean in reference to RF radiation exposure? Now, RF radiation is not like uh, the kind of radiation that we get uh, from uh, nuclear. It's RF. It is D, the total exposure averaged over time. So it's the answer is right here, time averaging, averaging over time. G0A05, what? must you do if an evaluation of your station shows RF energy radiated from your station exceeds permissible limits? Well, it's take action to prevent human exposure to RF fields. Um, some people say they're RF sensitive. I frankly don't believe that, um, but that's just me. All right. Um, G0A06, what precautions should be taken when installing a ground-mounted antenna? Um, one of the concerns is that somebody would grab a hold of it as you're on the air. So it should be installed such that it is protected against unauthorized access. Well, that sure is a convoluted sentence. It should be installed so that uh, someone can't get to it. G0A07, what effect does transmitted duty cycle have when evaluating RF exposure? Um, it determines um, how much exposure there is. Uh, they say a, a lower transmitter duty cycle permits greater short-term exposure. Well, that's true. So uh, lower power longer equals longer exposure. G0A08. Which of the following steps must an amateur operator take to ensure compliance with FCC regulations when transmitter power exceeds levels specified in FCC Part 97.13? Um, I don't know what that... It must be the one that has to do with the uh, RF exposure. So it says, C, perform a routine RF exposure evaluation. Posting a copy, <laughs> uh, that probably wouldn't help any. G0A09, what type of instrument can be used to accurately measure RF field? Um, and this is, again, what I'm going to build in the next video. A calibrated field strength meter with a calibrated antenna. Um, I'd say the answer would be a calibrated field strength meter with any antenna, as long as it's calibra calibrated with that antenna. G0A10, what is the one thing that can be done if evaluation shows that a neighbor might receive more than the allowable limit of RF expo exposure 
from the main lobe of a directional antenna? Um, the answer is don't point it his way. Take precautions to ensure that the antenna cannot be pointed. Well, heck. Take precautions to ensure that the antenna cannot be pointed in their direction. Um, well, how in the world would you do that? You've got a rotator that'll turn your antenna uh, 360 plus 90 degrees, 450 degrees. It's one thing to say not to point it that person's direction. It's another say to somehow mechanically stop it. That cannot be done. G0 A11. What precautions should be taken if you install an indoor transmitting antenna? And you want to make sure that you're well within the maximum permissible exposure limits. G0 A12. What precaution should be taken should you take ILO? G zero A twelve. What precaution should you take whenever you make adjustments or repairs to an antenna? Uh, it's good advice to turn off the transmitter, um, disconnect the feed line because if you happen to come across some high voltage, God help you, or if you happen to touch like a drill to the feed line, it might destroy the front end of your beautiful transceiver, and that's not a good thing. G0 B01. Which wire or wires in a four conductor connection should be attached to fuses or circuit breakers in a device that operates from 240 volt single phase? Um, the obvious answer is the two wires that carry the voltage. The neutral wire is at ground and so is a ground wire. These are redundant, they're safety. Um, G0 B02 what is the maximum wire mac oh sorry G0 B02 what is the minimum wire size that may be safely used for a circuit that draws 20 amps of continuous current um the answer to 20 amps would be uh, number 12 uh if it was 15 amps the answer would be number 14 uh, 50 amps is, I think, number 6. G0 B03, which size of fuse or circuit breaker would be appropriate to use with a circuit that uses number 14 wire? Well, um, there's a word missing here, and that might be volts. Are we talking about 5,000 volts? 1,000 volts? 100 volts, 240 volts. Generally speaking, for house wiring, number 14 would be uh, 15 amps, as discussed in the prior question. So D15. But that's a misleading question because if you are fusing, and you could use a circuit breaker, a high voltage line, um, you might have a different answer here. G0, B04. Which of the following is a primary reason for not placing a gasoline fuel generator? Uh, inside an occupied area. Well, it's just plain stupid. It's carbon monoxide poisoning. I think we all know that. G0, B05. Which of the following conditions will cause a ground fault circuit interrupter called a GFCI or in the old days a GFI to disconnect the 120 volts or 240 volt line uh, to a device um, when there's um, current flowing even a small amount. I forget the voltage. It's it's pretty close to nothing in the ground wire. G0 B06. Why must the metal enclosure of every item of station equipment be grounded? Well, uh, to prevent it being electrocuted. So it's D hazardous voltages. Um, there is a video out there, by the way. Um, where the author of the video, the manufacturer of microphones, recommends clipping the ground connection if you have um, a um, uh, yeah, AC hum on the audio. Don't do that. G0 B07. Which of the following choices should be observed when climbing a tower using a safety belt or har harness? Um, you want to make sure it's the right size. Um, Confirm that the belt is rated for the weight of the climber and it's well well within, I'd say well within, it's allowable service life. Mine is not. Mine's cracked and it's going to have to go in the trash. 
G0B08. What should be done by any person preparing to climb a tower that supports electrically powered devices? Make sure all those devices are off. Now, I've been in a situation where a guy did lock everything off and tagged it, and some idiot turned the stuff on. Uh, the guy about lost his arm. It was not pretty. So even though you lock it out and tag it, it's really better if you can mechanically, physically lock it so some idiot can't come along and turn it on. Um, that was in a factory where I was working, and it, like I said, it was an awful situation. G0B09, um, why should solder joints not be used with wires that connect the base of a tower to a system ground? Well, um, uh, their answer is not great. A solder joint would likely be destroyed by the heat of a lightning strike. Let me tell you, the wire will likely be destroyed. But um, there's a lot of other reasons. Mechanically, it's not a good connection. And yeah, even a small amount of voltage can uh, can melt the, uh, the solder. Which of the following is a danger from lead tin solder? Uh, it's question G0B10. Um, lead gets into everything and it doesn't go away. So lead can contaminate food if hands are not washed. For some reason, they don't want to use the word the in these questions. So I don't know. G0B11. Which of the following is good practice for lightning protection grounds? Uh, they, it's good to bond them all together, to put them all together, make them mechanically strong and tight to kind of spread the voltage around, the current around too. G0B12. What is the purpose of a power supply interlock? Well, it's to shut things off. So to ensure dangerous voltages are removed if the cabinet is opened. That's called an interlock. It's a switch sometimes on the lid. And uh, it can be cheated, but that's not a smart thing to do. G0B13, what must you do when powering your house from an emergency generator? Well, um, in California, we have some really strict regulations. Um, you've got to disconnect the in incoming fire peat so you don't uh, feed power back down the, uh, the, the power line. G0B14, which of the following is covered by the National Electric Code, the NEC? Uh, it does discuss electrical safety in the ham shack, so it's uh, C. G0B15. Which of the following is true of an emergency generator installation? Uh, again, it needs to be in a well-ventilated area away from the house. Uh, carbon monoxide kills people every year from running generators inside a house. It snows, they start up the generator in the kitchen, and they're dead. And that's the last question. We've done 462 questions in the question pool. Thanks for listening. I'm going to do another video. I'm going to add one more, and that's going to be how to take a test. And there is a skill to doing it. Um, I've taken a number of exams, very many, and as um, in government jobs and for different licenses, uh, novice, uh, advanced, general, extra. I said those out of order. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Jim. W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please do subscribe. Thank you for listening.